Well, from the moment the TV started beaming into Australian homes, we fell in love with its larger-than-life images and sounds. Right at the start, it seemed perfect for... for game shows. Pick a box. Way back in 1957, programs like Pick a Box leapt from radio to the newfangled television. Yeah. Suddenly, we could see the hosts, the winners, the losers, and the crazy audience. The game show had arrived. For the next 50 years, thousands of contestants came on down, bought vowels, and hit their buzzers. It was a frenzy of curly questions, wheel spins, box flips, flashing lights, and very excited winners. They laughed, they cried, they gasped for breath, and even wet themselves. Well, keep a tight grip on your drinks, cos we're about to meet some of Australia's biggest game show hosts and, of course, their glamorous hostesses. Jimmy Hannon. Victoria Nichols and Philip Brady. to all of you and it's so lovely to see so many lovely familiar faces we might start with philip and you can take us back to was it 1961 you were 21 yeah and i was doing a show called concentration live to air once a week 2 30 in the afternoon no videotape no auto cue and no second chance it was like walking a tightrope without a safety net but did you realize at the time you were starting a whole new genre Back then, the game show was born. I, I guess so, although it was short-lived, uh, Dave, and I'll tell you why. After I'd been doing it about six months, Reg Grundy flew down from Sydney and said to me, a 21-year-old, look, I've got some bad news for you. You're about to lose your show. I said, oh, he said, yes. He said, we're going national with concentration and we're giving the game to Terry Deer. Dear, yes. uh, so for a 21-year-old, it was a crushing blow. But Reg, uh, to his uh, credit, said to me back then in 1961, Philip, we will work together again someday, I promise you. And in 1969, he kept his word, and I got a show called Everybody's Talking for Reg Grundy, which led to 3,000 more Reg Grundy quizzes over the years. <laughs> Philip, are you after another job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, He's Dave, trying. I wouldn't He's mind trying. another gig. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm auditioning tonight, folks. <laughs> now, now, Jimmy, you've done yeah. a stack of game shows, but you actually started as a contestant. I Let, did indeed. Let's have a look. <gasps> oh, <laughs> this is the darling host, who last week successfully answered all seven songs correctly and is back for the second round of the Melody Marathon. Our name, that tune. Hey. Oh, Whoa. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was just enjoying that too. <laughs> Tell us about the early days and after you were discovered. Uh, they worked you hard, I understand. <laughs> yes, well, well, I've done 20, in a, 20 shows in a day. Whoa. Yes. Oh. Up in Brisbane called a show called Take a Letter. Yeah. Oh. And we did 20 shows that day. We did it in 12 hours. You've never had it so good, folks, have you? <laughs> no. One's enough in the yeah. day. Thanks very much. <laughs> Berjo, tell us, you were a professional 10-pin bowler. So how did you then move on to become a TV superstar? Yeah, what a boring life I've had. Um, <laughs> well, I was bowling and um, at St Leonard's and um, I was just talking to the girl behind the desk, as you do, and... I walked away and, uh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, <laughs> I walked away and uh, the guy standing behind me walked up to the counter and said, uh, who was that? And she said, it's John Burgess, he's a professional bowler and he said, oh, he's got a good voice, he should be in radio. So she couldn't wait to rush down and tell me that it was John Laws, just said, you've got a good voice, you should be in radio. So I went and introduced myself and got to know him a bit and he uh, 
taught me a bit about the radio. I taught him to bowl. So it's Lewis's fault if you're uh, playing something. <laughs> Rosemary, you, uh, you appeared on Spending Spree with Jimmy. Yes, I did. And because you were the resident hostess on the station, you just did as you were told. Mm. And I think you had a, a hostess at the time who was ill. Yes. So I was <laughs> and told, you got the job. go and do the job. Oh. <laughs> so I did the job. But then you were also the, the first to appear, <gasps> shock horror, pregnant. <laughs> on television. I think I pretty much was, yes. Yeah, that created quite oh. a stir, didn't it? Well, it did. I'd say, you know, when do you want me to finish? And the station kept saying, <laughs> as they do, we'll let you know as soon as we get a replacement. And, like, I was about eight months pregnant and pretty <laughs> not looking too... I didn't think to crash hot. And they finally <laughs> did say, yes, well, all right. But what happened was the ratings for that particular quarter hour were doing very well. And I only found that out later. <laughs> I think everyone thought she's going to get carted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mystery and Turpy. Hey, look at the prices, right? I thought it was being very formal there. Yes, there was you. always these screaming women. They were just like an endless supply of screaming women. Was that Still today. Yes. Yeah, I've heard that. Yes. <laughs> Trying to get and it. always Trying way to come on down. Was that always the case? <laughs> well, we used to record that at Festival Hall in mm -hmm. Melbourne, and um, they used to bust them in from a lot of country towns, and they. I'm sure they all arrived with their own wine casks. <laughs> they always got very, very excited. Was, was there ever a time you were sort of in danger of your life from this excitement? I remember a lady, and she was lovely, but she was very large and exceedingly. And uh, most, of, most of them used to jump. And, of course, being macho and in my 30s, how long ago was that? Two years ago, yeah. just shows you what a good memory you've got. I used to, yeah, I used to catch them on the on the hip or something. You know, yeah, oh. host. And she won the car, and her sister came running down, and her sister was even bigger. <laughs> and I remember standing there going, "Oh no!" Daily, daily. <laughs> and there's nowhere to go. The other thing in a lot of the game shows too is the role of the, uh, of course, the, the co-host, very essential. Barbie, tell us about in in your day when you first started out. Was it a bit of a case of maybe sort of be seen and gorgeous, and not heard, but not yes. necessarily heard. Yeah. Uh, probably to be seen and not have an opinion would be more like it. Women everywhere tuned in to see what you were wearing. Well, wearing didn't I they? know, and that was the day. I mean, you sort of wore hot pants, the shortest miniskirts. It's, it's a wonder you weren't oh, running for wow. indecent exposure. Mm. Oh, oh, really? oh, dear, that's, oh, that's a bit sure. rough. Isn't Rudy, it? Yeah. did you get any complaints about the fashion? Not at all. Oh. <laughs> None at all. Not from me, anyway. <laughs> Let's talk to Victoria, yeah. shall we now? <laughs> you were hired for your quirky sense of humour. Tell us about your audition. I was asked to audition for this by the powers that be, and I thought, oh, well, I better turn up. So I did. And they said, bring a bathing costume. So I'm, oh, I don't want to be in a bathing costume. I'm not a blah, blah, blah. I did all this sort of number at home. And <laughs> I thought, oh, bloody hell. So my, my um, partner and I at the time devised this kind of thing. Why don't you take your neck to knees? Because I'd just done something for some children recently and I had this whole set of neck to knees and a mop cap and the whole thing. I thought, oh, that's a really good idea. I don't think he thought I would. And of course, you don't do that to me because that's a good idea. So I'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> so they offered it to me a couple of times. I thought, oh, yeah, I'll do that for six months. That'll be nice. And I stayed there for two and a half years and that's it. But when you... When you then I ran away. <laughs> you did break the mould. Yes. But when you left, the mould got reassembled back. again. Yes, well, they... Why do you reckon? Well, they didn't really like... <laughs> See, I'm a woman who'll say what I think, right? Oh, don't hold that. I'm, don't hold I'm used to that, that as yes. well. Right? Let me tell you. Yes, and I think, well, it was uncomfortable. <laughs> With me around, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Part of being a TV host is that you need to expect the unexpected, particularly live television, and particularly if you're a game show host. Let's take a look at a few moments when things didn't go entirely to plan. <laughs> the aim is to amass as much money in your bank as possible. Top money spinner becomes our champ. Jimmy, I've got to ask you, because you, you touched on it very earlier when you said that, ba you know, in the early days everything was done by hand. No electronics right. and, and everything was done manually. How difficult was that? How you much sure learned to ad-lib, didn't you, yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. 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 Cover a lot of gaps, things, you know. Things yeah. fell over, <clears throat> people died. <laughs> a, piece, 
<laughs> Actually, someone died on my show. Yeah. We yeah. Had a yeah. yeah. Somebody died on your show, and I lost too. about three contestants. We had yeah. someone die in the audience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the show, everyone got up to leave the show, and the person's still sitting. We had to. Is everyone lost okay? Yeah. 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 We got you all. John, John and I have never lost. What happened? <laughs> we had a lady win on Temptation. We said, "Congratulations, Mrs. Thing or whatever," and she fell off the chair. And we said. They stopped tape when we went over, she was dead on the floor. Oh. So we had to then redo the it again. <laughs> I, I think her family made sure they got the prize. Of course they would. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We, we had and we time. paid for the funeral too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you saw the symbols yeah. on Casino 10 <laughs> wheels spinning around, and we had two categories whammy or blackout. <laughs> and I, I said to one of my contestants, who'd been chewing earlier in the show, I didn't know they were heart tablets, and he'd been oh. chewing on the show, and the wheel stopped, and I said, uh, I said, um, Henry, what do you want, a whamby or blackout? And I turned to him, and he'd, he had blacked out. He had, he had passed out. He died uh, oh, wow. during the show, during the taping of the show. No. Oh, yeah. God. So it can happen, yes. Goodness. Jimmy, oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, don't do that. Jimmy, don't do that. <laughs> he lives! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please thank our Australian game show legend. Yeah.